Hello and welcome to FTTR, I am Hugh McQuaid and today we are talking about NWA When Our Shadows Fall. This is my thoughts on the show that aired last night. I'm going to run through some of the card, tell you my highlights, my lowlights and my overall recommendation for the show as a whole. So, talking about When Our Shadows Fall, this was my first NWA pay-per-view that I purchased and I watched. And would I recommend this show? start with that A. Eh? Yes, I would. I thought this was a really, really cracking pay-per-view. I thought there was some really good matches, some really good storyline developments, and some really nice surprises. So, shall we get into the card, and let me tell you about some of my... Let's start with the lowlights. Some of the moments that didn't stick the landing for me personally. And we'll start with Tyrus and Pope. Now, this match to me felt very main roster WWE, personally. It was big man versus small man, which, you know, can work really well. We've seen in the case of Darby Allen and AEW. That sort of style of match can work really, really well. Here, however, I just don't think Tyrus is the guy to do it. And I don't want all my NWA reviews to just be me ragging on Tyrus, because I'm not a fan of Tyrus. I don't think he works that well with Pope. I like his persona, but I just don't think in the ring he holds up, personally. He just doesn't stack up to the rest of the guys that he's in there with. And I think I thought it really showed in this match. The match went roughly 10 minutes, and it didn't really feed into the grudge match stipulation. This, to me, was just plodding. Plodding through the show didn't enjoy it too much. It was definitely my lowest point on the card. And yeah, I really want this feud with Pope and Tyrus to be over, but you know, heel shenanigans meant that Tyrus got the win. Spoilers, by the way, for this video. Just throwing it out there. I'll put it at the front. But yeah, that match didn't really stick the landing for me personally. But that was really probably the only negative I had about this show as a whole. I thought there were some really good matches, particularly, I'll get into my favourites, the tag team action on this show. The four-way tag under AAA Libre or Lucha Rules. I hate we call it Lucha Rules. I'm going to go with Lucha Rules. That match was phenomenal. That match was really, really good. I really enjoyed that. It went. It was so fast-paced, a lot more fast-paced than some of the action we see on NWA TV. And it put over these new guys called La Rebellion, trying to read Amarilla, Mecha Wolf and Bessie 666. They were awesome, they were so cool and they worked really well with The End as well, who I love. The End are one of my favourite tag teams at the moment. They're just cool as fuck. I really love them. And this match was great. And it really positioned them top of the tag team rankings and feeding into that, oh man, the triple threat between Aaron Stevens, Kratos, that duo, Strictly Business and The War Kings, I thought was probably my match of the night, personally. I didn't expect to love it as much as I did. I thought Stevens was the perfect babyface in peril, leading to a really interesting angle with Kratos, where Kratos cheats and Steven doesn't know, and that sort of rekindled their friendship. So you know there's going to be an even bigger betrayal coming down the road for them too. But those two are just magnetic together. Their chemistry and their storyline is probably my favourite in NWA at the moment. I really loved everything with Stevens and Kratos. And Strictly Business, wow, they had a hell of a night. The team of, I'm blanking on his name, they kept calling him Chris Masters. Chris Adonis and Tom Latimer, they were just terrific heels together. And then the Walkings showed why they're one of the best teams in NWA because they worked so well with everyone. They had a really good showing on NWA Power and they had an even better showing here. I think the tag team division is really stacked actually at the moment. You look at some of the groups they've got, like the end, the Walkings, Strictly Business, and then the champion Stevens and Kratos. It is just incredible. I love that match so much. And I would recommend if you watch anything from this show, I would watch that tag match personally. Closely followed by the main event of Nick Aldis versus Trevor Murdoch for me. This was just storytelling, basically. You know, the match was 
it was what it was. I really enjoyed it. But the ending, I, I get why you could say it's a bit too screwy. It's a bit too much. Sorry, sorry, sorry. There we go. A bit too screwy of a finish. Basically what happened was Nick Aldis smacked the referee, clocked him on purpose, and then went to beat up Trevor Murdoch. Trevor Murdoch eventually got the advantage, got him in a Texas Cloverleaf. Ref sees Nick Aldis tap, but then believes that Trevor Murdoch was the one who hit him and Nick Aldis wins by disqualification. It was heartbreaking, infuriating in all the best ways for me. I didn't feel let down, I felt like all this is just such a prick. He's just such a bastard. And he's screwed over Trevor Murdoch again, which was hammered down in the promo by Trevor Murdoch at the end. It was great. He was just heartbroken. And the show went off air on a really sour bit of note, in a good way. That was a perfect closing sequence for me. The match, Nick Aldis versus Trevor Murdoch, was also a terrific, terrific match. I'd go out your way to see that. I really loved it. And then that's closely followed by me personally for Serena Deeb versus Camille. Camille is just awesome. Serena Deeb is not particularly for me. I don't know what it is, I just don't really gel with her. But I really loved this match, it was really good. It went pretty long. And we got a new women's champion. We got Camille defeating Serena Deeb. I wonder if Serena Deeb's going to just focus on AEW for now. Now she's out of the NWA sort of stratosphere. But she can be a star wherever she is, just because I don't personally get along with her doesn't mean I don't really... I can see what people like, but it's just not for me. But Camille is just... she's a star. She's an absolute star in any company that she goes to. And I think she's the right person to hold that belt. The match was really technical, it mixed technical skill with power, which is always good. And it just, it just rocked. It was just an awesome, awesome match. Those three matches were easily my top three. Some of the other matches, like JTG versus Fred Rosser, that was really fun. It was good to see JTG. I haven't seen a lot of GG. It's hard to say JTG in a while. I really enjoyed that. It was a really good encounter. Really cool seeing Darren Young and JTG together. Yeah. It was just... I don't know why. Just weird. That was a really fun match. And finally, I'll touch on Thunder Rosa and Molina versus... Taryn, Taryn Tarrell, and Kylie, Kylie Ray, Kaylee Ray, Kaylee Ray, Smi oh, I don't know, I always thought it was Smiley, no Kaylee, Kaylee Ray is NXT UK, what a fake fan, Kylie Ray, Kylie Ray looked great, I'm really sad she never got a proper run in AEW, but I really loved everything she did in this match, I thought this match was really good, I thought Melina was really good, Rosa was really good, Taryn was really good, and Kylie Ray was really good. I thought, it, overall, this card was just really fun. It was a really fun night of wrestling. Pro just wrestling. And I just really enjoyed it. It was a breath of fresh air for me. I'd give this a solid 4 out of 5, purely because it didn't have just an absolute 30 minute banger for me. It didn't have that for me, but it had all the storytelling that I would like in my NWA. So 4 out of 5 from me. Let me know if you watch the show, let me know down below in the comments, and I will try and reply to every single one of you. Thank you all ever so much for your support, thank you so much for watching my content, thank you all ever so much, and have a nice day.